Metformin is one of the most popular longevity drugs on the planet. Many people take it not just for diabetes, but hoping that it'll make them live longer. But here's the twist you probably haven't heard about. Several studies now suggest that metformin may actually cancel out some of the benefits from exercise, the very thing that is supposed to make you live longer. Just recently, there was a 16-week double-blind placebo-controlled trial on people with metabolic syndrome, and they found that those who exercised while taking metformin saw blunted benefits from the exercise. There were four groups in total, low-intensity exercise plus placebo, low-intensity exercise plus metformin, high-intensity exercise plus placebo, and high-intensity exercise plus metformin. VO2max improved only in the placebo groups, not in the metformin groups. Body fat decreased in both the high-intensity groups regardless of metformin, but not in the low-intensity group. Placebo groups who exercised saw improved flow-mediated dilation and microvascular blood flow, both of which are indicators of vascular function and insulin sensitivity. Metformin groups, however, saw no significant increase in these markers. Metformin also blunted the reductions in fasting glucose, ET1, and TNF-alpha, compared to placebo exercise. That's quite shocking if you think about it. Just because the individuals were taking metformin, they saw less benefits from exercise, and some of the benefits they avoided altogether. What it means is that arguably metformin is a net negative for otherwise healthy people who don't need it for diabetes. I'm going to discuss the potential benefits of metformin as a longevity compound later in this video. But this is not the first study showing that metformin reduces the benefits from exercise. Another 2020 randomized controlled trial on adults over 65 saw that taking metformin while resistance training blunted muscle hypertrophy and gene expression related to muscle growth. And an even earlier trial saw the same results. Older adults taking metformin built less muscle and strength compared to the placebo group. So if someone is doing resistance training and they're taking metformin, they appear to see less benefits on muscle growth. And they also see less insulin sensitivity caused by the exercise. However, there are several studies showing that metformin reduces muscle loss during this use, like bed rest or hospitalization. This is extremely interesting. If you take metformin while lifting weights, you build less muscle. But if you take metformin when you're not lifting weights, when you're hospitalized and you have immobilization, then metformin reduces the muscle loss that happens because of this use. But why is this so? Well, it's probably because metformin is a potent mTOR inhibitor. mTOR is the main growth switch in the body that gets activated during exercise. mTOR is absolutely critical to muscle growth, as it increases protein synthesis, the growth of new muscle tissue. If you inhibit mTOR after exercise, you won't build muscle. That's why you're not going to build muscle by fasting or eating a low-calorie diet. However, during bed rest and disuse, metformin prevents muscle loss by activating AMPK, the pathway of muscle preservation, and it also helps to eliminate senescent cells that cause inflammation. By lowering inflammation, muscle loss signaling decreases. But because metformin interferes with the recovery pathways such as mTOR, you see this dual effect. Anti-anabolic effects from metformin when you're lifting weights, but anti-catabolic effects if you're not lifting weights. When it comes to VO2 max, then similar effects are true. Besides the study I showed earlier, several studies show that metformin reduces exercise capacity and peak aerobic capacity during exercise. Metformin impairs mitochondrial function, especially at complex 1 of the electron transport chain, which reduces ATP production efficiency and limits VO2 max during intense exercise. So if someone is trying to build muscle or increase their VO2max, then they should definitely avoid metformin. Both VO2max and muscle strength are components of longevity, and people with higher VO2max and muscle strength live longer. So if you're taking metformin while trying to increase your VO2max and muscle strength, then you're jeopardizing some of your results. I understand if someone is taking metformin for the sake of diabetes, there is evidence that metformin reduces the risk of mortality in diabetics. But based on the evidence that I shared with you right now, it's arguable whether metformin will be a longevity compound for otherwise healthy people who are already exercising. In type 2 diabetics, metformin has been clearly and consistently been shown to reduce mortality, cancer, and heart disease. Where longevity enthusiasts got excited was when a 2014 study showed that metformin users with diabetes had a lower mortality risk than non-diabetics who weren't taking metformin. Now, if you think about it for a second, then it just sounds very bizarre. Diabetics who had diabetes while they were taking metformin lived longer than the otherwise healthy people who weren't taking metformin. This is quite crazy if you think about it. Diabetes is a disease that shortens your life expectancy by about 5-10 years. And based on the findings of this study, metformin would be so powerful that it makes up for this 5-10 to 10 year shorter life expectancy and even adds on top of that, it increases the life expectancy compared to regular healthy people. 
Fortunately, a 2022 study reanalyzed the initial 2014 study and discovered that diabetics taking metformin didn't in fact live longer than non-diabetics not taking metformin. The reason for the discrepancy was that the initial study had some confounding variables and selection bias that were fixed in the reanalysis. The interventions testing program studies on metformin have also shown that it doesn't really extend lifespan in mice. Metformin only extends lifespan if combined with rapamycin. Metformin doesn't extend lifespan in heterogeneous mice, which means mice that are genetically diverse. It only extends lifespan in certain mice with certain genes. With all of that being said, it's hard to say that metformin would be a longevity compound, especially for otherwise healthy people who don't have diabetes. First of all, the evidence from observational studies is very limited. And second of all, if you look at the components of longevity, such as VO2 max and muscle strength, then metformin appears to be a negative for people who are otherwise healthy. Do I think metformin has some use case in non-diabetics? Yes, there are some situations where taking metformin can be useful. For example, the situations where you're not exercising and you're not lifting weights. If you are immobilized or you go for a longer period of time without exercising, then yes, metformin can be a net positive. Coincidentally, all the longevity gurus or scientists that promote metformin are also the ones who don't exercise. So for these individuals, maybe metformin is a positive. But if you are someone who exercises regularly and you are trying to improve your body composition, your year to max and your muscle strength and muscle mass, then metformin based on these studies is generally a net negative. I ranked metformin and 100 other supplements from worst to best based on their benefits and evidence from studies. Check out this video next to see where metformin ranks.